1905, Albert Einstein wrote three articles, each of them deserving of a Nobel Prize. The first of them was about Brownian motion, and in that uh, paper, following the steps of Democritus, he proved the existence of atoms, and he provided a way of measuring the magnitude of the atoms. In the other two papers, he developed the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. One aspect of theory of relativity is that this space is curve. Um, imagine that there are four people holding a table tablecloth, each of them holding from one of the corners. And then you put a ball, sort of heavy ball, in the middle of the tablecloth. So the, the tablecloth will curve and it will go down. And then imagine that you put another ball, a smaller ball, like a marble, and what you will see is that the smaller ball will go closer to the, will be a, sort of attracted to the bigger ball. And because it's following the shape of the tablecloth. This uh, idea of Einstein solves the problem that the theory of universal gravitation of Newton had. So Newton's theory it was a, a theory about a force, gravity, between objects that are at a distance. And that doesn't make sense for a, a, the idea of a mechanical universe in which um, one thing has contact to another thing and the other thing has contact with the another thing. So there, is so there should always be contact. It's like a clock. But, but Newton's theory is not like that. So we've got that problem solved by saying that the universe, the space, or space-time, as Einstein call it, it's curved. So the attraction between bodies is not a uh, metaphysical force. It is an object going towards another object because it's following the structure of the universe. Okay, but we are not here to talk about um, the genius of Einstein and his theory of relativity. I'm interested here in, in talk, talking about his conception about the role of physics. He says, physics is the attempt at the conceptual construction of a model of the real world, as well as its lawful structure. So basically, what Einstein is saying is that the atom the mathematical formulas that describe energy of atoms, that describe the movement of celestial bodies. All these are descriptions of reality. It's something that is there. So the atom is not an abstract concept. It's out there in the world. Well, this seems obvious, but it's not so obvious because until Einstein, uh, there was no proof of the existence of atoms. The idea of atoms was a concept as old as Democritus, but nobody could see an atom. So if you can't see it, is it, is it real or is it just a convenient conceptual tool to understand the world? Okay, so Einstein, Einstein's view is that uh, the, the conceptual elements of th theories in physics, they are describing the world. This posture is called realism. That's not the, um, the obvious posture. In fact, the quantum, in quantum mechanics, <coughs> Another posture is more popular than this one. So, Niels Bohr was the uh, 
a physicist, a Danish physicist, who led the research on theoretical conceptualization of quantum mechanics. And in quantum mechanics, we're dealing with very small particles, like atoms or even smaller, and it is not possible to determine with precision the position of an atom, so we only can use probability to, the, to not determine, to predict with certain degree of probability the position of an object in, this, in the world. Now, the um, formalism used to calculate that is called the wave function. Um, we can use either the Schrodinger equations or Heisenberg matrices to make these predictions. But Niels Bohr says these are tools that help make predictions about the world. And his words are this, there is no quantum world, there is only abstract quantum physical description. It is wrong to think that the task of physics is to find out how nature is. Physics concerns what we can say about nature. The entire quantum formalism is to be considered as a tool for deriving predictions. So, that's Niels Bohr. All the formulas in quantum mechanics are tools to make predictions. They are not describing reality as it is. Finally, Nancy Cartwright is a philosopher who wrote two interesting books, one in 1983 called How the Laws of Physics Lie, and another one in 1999, The Doubled World. So, by saying that the laws of physics, physics lie, she's not saying that they're completely wrong, but what she's saying is that and she's against the idea of finding fundamental laws of reality, universal laws of reality, because what she finds is that the, the universe, the world, is not uniform, is doubled, is, is a patchwork, and laws applied in specific contexts. These universal laws are always laws that w work within some constraints. They are not universal. So, for Cartwright, the world is not a mechanical clock. It is a double world. <laughs>